All right, everybody, I want to welcome you to the uh, Lacey Range on this beautiful, beautiful Sunday afternoon. Uh, what I've got right here is a Type 99, which normally I keep that open, been looking down the scope. But <clears throat> I've got a Type 99 Sniper. Uh, been doing quite a bit of work on it, uh, trying to get the scope zero. And yes, there is a way that you can zero scopes. You may not be able to see it on this. I will inset a uh, picture, but there's three screws right here: the outer screw, uh, does a lock ring. It's right there, and then the inner screw does a second ring, which rotates the lens. So you can work. on it and get it on there. Now I, I have got this in uh, pretty close to zero. On my left and right I'm good to go right now. I am uh, a little high but took it out to the 600 today. Unfortunately didn't fit, do any filming out there and uh, connected all the way out. So it, it it's pretty close and I think she's just about ready for a vintage sniper match. So let me shoot a few rounds here and we'll see what she does and uh, I'll capture it in the other camera over here on the spot shot and uh, we'll see how she does. Normally I have my wife or John Brewer right here to, to video but not today. Alright we're recording on everything. One round. All right, now I'm running a 174 grain Sierra Match King uh, over a IMR 4895, 48.4.0 uh, grains with CCI primers and PPU brass. Now some of you may know that the uh, scope is just like the modern ACOGs. You have a uh, hash marks to do your lines. you got windage marks. We'll show you a picture of that. Uh, another thing about this, as you can see here, there is no cheek well. I mean, you're down low and you got to make sure that your head is centered. And here we go at 100 yards. Okay. As you hopefully can see from the inset, I am shooting, I don't think we knocked it up high. Yep, recoil took it out. I'm shooting at the very bottom of the diamond. And we have an impact about six inches high. But left and right is perfect. Okay, let me stop that one. Let me take a picture. Okay, and what? Everything looks good on the brass. Of course, I've been shooting this gun today. This is the first uh, shooting on this uh, particular brass. And uh, I think what now we'll do is uh, we'll shoot one more round just to make sure that it impacts the same area and make sure I'm holding my head right. And we'll see how it does. Now, see right now I'm going to have to tighten up my... scope over here. Okay, once again, taking the target. One hash mark, They're right on the bottom of the triangle, head centered. Oh yeah, what I'm talking about for a group. Let me take another. Well. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Let's shoot one more just to, just to confirm I'm going on. 
Love it. I we'll have to do a little rigging on this right here. Okay, we're getting another little film out of it. Once again, no cheek hole. This sort of got my barely touching my cheek right here, down low on the scope and the, the stock. And here we go, same spot. Looking good. Looking good. Okay, let me stop this one. And it sure looks like three rounds all in there. Let me, uh, got a picture of that. Let me uh, turn the phone off. Breach is clear. Now, we'll walk down there and I'll pick back up at the 100 yard range and let you let you see what we did. I mean, you're seeing it on here, hopefully, but just in case this didn't work out, let's go down and get it on the other one. And also, just so you can see the lacy range. See, I've got get down there, you can see the 100, 150, 200, and 250. Now, I've got in the 300 that goes into the woods. Uh, but we'll check that out here in a minute. Okay, here we are, 100 yards. <clears throat> got some busted clods here that could get out of the way. I'm going to shoot them. Got them but <clears throat> for a lot of you that uh, doesn't have too much confidence in a 7.7 uh, .7 jab, that is three rounds impact right there. Uh, that's pretty doggone tight. So like I say, it's a good shooting gun, good load, uh, carries it in there. Now here's my aiming point. So if you, when you do look at the steady line for a Type 99 sniper, you'll notice that one line comes straight up from the 100 yard or 100 meter mark. That is essentially right there where it's at. I'm, I'm at, putting the 100 mark right here. So, of course, in my book, I'm just I'm writing that down and right there to be. Uh, you know, you can't get much better than that. Uh, Especially for what we're, we're doing, Virginia Stiper stuff, uh, that'll hold all day long. And, uh, but, like I say, it's uh, roughly about about six inches high right there, which I, I can handle that. What's tough is the scope is uh, offset to the left. So, depending on how I'm looking through it, in which the parallax on that uh, scope you know, with nothing to put your head against, it's hard to maintain consistency when you're shooting, uh, like you would with a normal rifle. But, as you can see, this last shot, it did come over just a little bit. But ideally, you want to be over here. If you're, point, if you're pointing right there, your impact should be right over here. Somewhere. Roughly an inch. It all depends on your uh, capability to shoot. Sometimes I've got it, sometimes I don't. I have to show you what I do. Uh, you take the good old rust -Oleum inverted marking paint. Sort of hate to cover that one up. And I'll go ahead and hit the black. Just so we can make it better. So I can see. There we go. Triangle's hard to beat as a aiming point. Uh, so let's say you, you, can, you can cover it right down there. Uh, another thing you can look at right here, when you're shooting uh, 
uh, steel, you, know, you got to be aware of what's around Because uh, right here, you can see the lead is cut into the dirt. It'll bust these clods completely up. Look over, uh, you know, so anybody standing to the side, animal, anything else, you know, it's dangerous of uh, getting some lead off of let me walk you up here and let you take a quick look at this. You can see where it's cut down right there. And you can see my, uh, I like shooting at this one with iron sights. Uh, that's roughly the uh, SR target uh, 9 and 10 ring. So usually if I can hold that at 100 with a, a gun, open sights now, not scope, uh, and keep them in the center, you know you generally got a winner. Now here's the uh, target that I've got, paper target down here, and as we can see, look on down the line, we can see the 150 and the 200, and off to the right is the 250. girl we're gonna shoot okay here we are again once again again I'm shooting a uh, 44 grains of uh, IMR 4895 with a 174 grain Sierra Match King 310 311 on it and PPU brass CCI primer okay now we're gonna go at 200 I'm still gonna use the 100 mark as my aiming point Done a little modification on my stand over here. Okay. And we're recording there. Okay, 200. Use the 100 mark. I centered up on the scope. 100 mark at the bottom of the triangle. Okay, still high. Okay, round number two. Same area, getting my face lined up. Now one thing about these drought, I've got to, we'll do a thing on the Type 97. Man, if they didn't have these little rubber, which this is a reproduction rubber on here. Uh, I mean, I'm wearing glasses. And it still bites me up here every time. You just got to get used to it. I, I, you know, to get the full feel of the scope as small as it is, it's uh, tough to do. Okay, three rounds right there. Let me stop this one. Take a picture. Okay, let's go down again and check this out. It, it looks really good from here again. I'll pull out my earplugs here. And that's another thing. Normally, I, I run headphones, and uh, but because where I got to get, you know, that headphone sticking out to the side here does not do you well with these. Uh, I would like to tell you, I mean, this is a fantastic shooting gun. I've got another Type 99 that shoots real well. Um, the 6.5s, mm, mine shoot okay, and I, I would definitely shoot them in a 200 yard match uh, but it'd be more for fun than being serious competition but uh, this not type 99 and I've got a, another early type 99 regular infantry rifle they will hold the line and uh, been really really happy with them uh, I've got a late war that 
I ain't even shot, so I don't know what he'll do. Of course, it's got the fixed, uh, fixed people in the rear. You know, wings on the front and wood butt plate and everything else. But this bad boy right here, uh, I'm sure it was brought back by uh, a soldier since it does have the Crustantium, Crustantium still on it. Of course, it's got the four power. Of course, the scope's mismatched. Everything else is matched up. Um, fine rifle. Uh, this is a reproduction sling on it. Um, and it looks like I paid $26.95 for the sling somewhere. Still got it on here. I guess I could take it off. But uh, let's go down range and uh, see what we've got. See if we should read them or we. Okay. Here we are at 200 yards. Got my pointer once again. With the Type 99 Japanese. <clears throat> As you can see, it looks like one shot there, and one shot there, and one shot there. Not too bad, that's three inches across right there. It's a three by three by three. Once again, my aiming point is right there. So, still holding pretty consistent. Uh, left and right, I'm still in there. Uh, I don't know much else I can say about this, but it definitely uh, shows potential. I'll say it. it would be nice if I had it adjusted. But it was wearing this triangle out. But man, those are so hard to, to mess with. And I, I honestly, I couldn't tell you. Uh, in sighting this thing in, I would not doubt that I've got over eight hours of shooting time with it. Uh, I'll inset some of the stuff uh, that I used, and maybe you can look at it and help you out. Uh, zero on it. But, uh, man, it, it's, it's time consuming. I uh, don't think you're going to go do it in one day. Uh, and I'm sure that they have some tools where they can sit down and do it. And do it in just a little bit. But, but that knowledge has been lost as far as I know. But here we are, 200. And they paint it and cover it up. Hey, uh, I just want to show you this is at the 200 yard line looking back toward my uh, brand new covered firing point uh, as you can see that's my barn right there just want to let you get a quick look at that okay I want to show everybody a little bit how to go about adjusting these you can see in here there's there's three screws right along the edge of this scope all right now if if the scope's never been messed with they're going to be covered uh they're going to have paint on them uh and it's up to you uh i prefer to shoot everything that that i own if, if at all possible and uh of course we we do the uh finish sniper matches here in henry county gun club uh, and that's one of my things so I'm going to shoot this thing. You know, it is expensive, but I'm going to shoot it. And as you can see, the outer screw right here unlocks the outer lock of it. Okay, now, one thing that you want to make sure you do, don't unloosen this second one until you do the first one. And then you take the lock ring, which hopefully you can see right here, 
and of course rotate it counterclockwise lefty loosey so you just loosen that up you don't you do not have to take either one of these all the way out just loosen them up okay then and hopefully let me back up just a little bit shoot your rifle first at 25 yards aim at the center of the target then mark where the impact is okay and always remember you know this is about an inch inch and a half offset to the left so you know therefore your impact should be to the right of where your scope is otherwise you're going to cross somewhere down the line there's a fancy name for it i can't remember it off the top of my head but you don't you don't want to do that just like with the m1c or the m1d uh, where it scopes off to the side you should maintain that inch and a half as close as you can to the to what the gun will shoot and uh, at 100 200 and you know like we shoot out normally out to 600 hey if it converges right there so be it it'll be okay we can, we can work with it but fire it first then, then lock it down the way I'm doing it right now I'm telling you right now it will not work if you got a lead sled or something else um, it, that's what you will need to put this gun in that's what I did uh, I've got something similar to a lead sled put it in there and locked it down and uh, then d did the movement okay and I loosened that outer screw loosen up the lock ring and uh, I have a camera tool for that which I've also got some pictures of hopefully I can put them on there and then loosen your second screen screw and what really works good if you've got somebody that can sit here and look through the scope while you're doing it and then rotate this now what I've noticed on this one and I can't say it works for all of them but if I go uh, clockwise it moves the impact left and up if I'm rotate it counterclockwise it goes left and down so you're gonna to have to just move it around a little by little now in my case I did this one by myself I would make small movements you know maybe uh, if after I shot it I may take this and just move it to about right there and then lock everything back down and shoot it again and see where it impacts at at 25 yards and guys it's it's like I say it takes a long time like this uh, but I'm sure that they had a tool that fit right in there and was open through the center and they could tweak it and um, probably had the ability to tr tweak some of the uh, mount that they had here now the there's a third screw on this on this that the type 97s do not have I did not have to mess with that one. Let's look and see if there's another ring in there, but that's all I see is a second ring. And you're going to have black junk um, in there. That sealant from the, uh, that the Japanese had put in there. Once again, if you're worried about collectability I would suggest that hey you just put it on there yeah, there, there are a few of these out there that match uh, but not many but if you're worried about collectability just leave it alone but if you want to shoot it and enjoy it that's what you got to do uh, feel free to put down in the comments any questions you may have uh, remarks and I'll try to add up and uh, put everything I've got in there try to mix it all in one place all right.